ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله تبارك وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله all thanks and praises to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank him we praise him we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in allah from the evil within our own selves and from our bad deeds whosoever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides no one can lead astray and whosoever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lead astray no one can guide and i bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran in the meanings of which O you who believe, obey Allah the way he ought to be obeyed and do not die except as Muslims. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord, the one that created you from one soul and from it he created its mate and from them both he created many men and women. So fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights, Allah indeed is all watcher over you. O you who believe, obey Allah, fear Allah and always speak the truth. He will guide you to do righteous good deeds and he would forgive you your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has indeed achieved the great success. The best speech is the speech of Allah, the Quran. The best guidance is the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of the matters are the new invented matters in the religion. And every new invented matter in the religion, bid'ah, is an astray, and every astray is in the hellfire. The niyyah, the intentions of an individual, as we all know and we heard many, many times, is the foundation of all goodness. Without the niyyah, without the proper intentions, the deeds, the physical actions has no value. Get rejected back to the person a person might be even subjected himself to the punishment of allah because of his intention so it's all about the niyyah what separates a ibadah an act of worship from something that is ada or a habit or something of that nature it's nothing but the niyyah of the person and of course the action and the subject of the niyyah and for us to talk about the niyyah and the sincerity of intentions it's something that as one of the early generations of Islam, he said, Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi rahimahullah, it should be in every subject, in the beginning of every chapter of every book, in every talk that we speak, we should start with reminding one another with the intentions. Because without it, all of our actions has no value whatsoever. And since the intentions is something that is done by the heart, the tongue has nothing to do with it. If you say a thousand times, nawaitu an, nawaitu an, it doesn't make any difference if the heart is upon something else. 
because the niya is a purely deed done by the heart. The physical speech has nothing to do with it. And therefore, when we talk about the niya, the first hadith in Sahih Imam al Bukhari, the first hadith that the ulama always starts with, the 40 hadith of Al Imam al Nawawi, and so on. The first thing that we teach ourselves and our children when it comes to the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, from the amal, from the actions, after the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even after making salah, is the niyyah, is the intentions. And when it comes to the act of ibadah versus the relationships between people towards one another, the ibadah which is between the person and his creator subhanahu wa ta'ala, the niyyah has more than one aspect to it but mainly two major things. First, the sincerity of the intentions. That the person is seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. لا يشهد بعمله إلا ربه تبارك wa ta'ala. That he, he does not, the person doing the action, does not seek with his actions the witness of anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People would see him. He come to the masjid, he prays with the people, people are seeing him. In his heart, he is not seeking this. He's not seeking the fact that people would see him. He does not gain anything from this. He's seeking, this is the action of the heart. The fact that the heart is seeking, it's not a physical thing, it's the heart is seeking what? That Allah is seeing us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing one's heart. In the hadith that we almost repeated in every Jumu'ah. Inna Allah la yanzuru. Another version, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your images, your, your wealth, your physical being, but rather looks at your hearts and your actions. So the hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees what's in it. Al-A'mal, we see it. We see the actions of one another. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees the hearts and the deeds done by the heart and the actions physically. And the actions physically, when it's done, if it's without the sincere intentions, it's all waste. Just people pleasing one another. A person returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of Al Qiyamah with nothing. And even it can be a punishment. Why? Because he's, he's been commanded, the Abd has been commanded to make the ibadah sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the upright religion. What is it? They were not commanded except, and this is the exclusiveness of it, except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What? Sincerely, purely. The religion is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And then Iqamatul Salah comes after this. Based on what's mentioned first. And this is the upright religion. And that's basically what the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about. La ilaha illallah is kalimatul ikhlas. Is the word of ikhlas. The word of sincerity. This is the aqd. This is the covenant between a person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he embraces the deen of al-Islam is to say, I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. He says that sincerely from his heart. That means he believes that the only one that the ibadah should be done to is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And then he make this physically and manifest his belief with his actions. Then the salah is accordingly, the zakah is accordingly. And all of the ibadat is like, like this and also his relationships with others based on the sincerity of intentions. So this is the one that has been worship, worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and not to single anyone or to make any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ibadah. And that's why those who turn to other than Allah in their dua, in their seeking help with their hearts, uh, seeking help from the dead and all of this, there is deficiency in their sincerity, in their ikhlas of al intention. The second aspect of it is when it comes to the action itself. Salatul Jumu'ah. Why would bring a person to the masjid at this time of the day? It's for Salatul Jumu'ah. You don't have to say while you're driving to the masjid, Nawaitu an you don't say, say that with your tongue. I have the intention now driving my car the, to go to this masjid to pray Salatul Jumu'ah. The niya is in the heart. You know what you're doing. The same thing when we come to the masjid. Why we're listening to the khutbah? It's mandatory, it's obligatory upon us. 
It's not like khutbah al Eid, for example, after the salah, a person can leave. This is not a reminder a person can leave. This is fard. This is an obligation. Even when the Prophet, والسلام, a man entered while he was giving the khutbah, and he, والسلام, he saw this man sat down. He said, Hal salayt? He said, No, I didn't pray. He said, Get up and make two rak'ah. And when a man was coming and crossing over the shoulders of the people during the khutbah, the Prophet والسلام, stopped it and he said, Ijlis faqad adayit, sit down, you have harmed the people because this is a mandatory thing. And the Prophet والسلام, his khutbah used to be short and the salah used to be long. So to differentiate the normal actions of people versus the ibadah is with one's intentions. To differentiate between Salatul Asra and Salatul Dhuhr is the intentions. The niyyah of the person. So this is, has many different ahkam to it. And again, the action here is in the heart with the sincere intentions that a person doing it for the sake of Allah and he knows what he's doing. If a person in the morning make ghusl, and ghusl is different than just taking a shower. Al ghusl that it becomes necessary for the person if he's in state of janaba, he has to take a shower for him to be able to make salah and the ibadah and so on. But he has a habit that every morning he takes a shower. He doesn't realize that he has to take a shower, but he takes it as a habit. And then realize after he goes to work that he was in state of Janab. He had relations the night before, he did not take the ghusl. And now he did not have the niyyah, the intentions that this ghusl was to lift the hadath or to lift the state of being in Janab to be able to make the salah. And he prayed Salatul Fajr like this, for example, or prayed Salatul Dhuhr. Salah is not valid. He has to take a shower. No sin, because he forgot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. But what made the difference between someone taking a shower, even if his entire body is covered with water, versus the ghusl, even it, it shows that it's the same action. The mandatory ghusl, just the entire body with the madmada wal istinshaq. Is the niyyah, is the intentions. And so many rulings like this. And that's why as, as Yahya ibn Abi Kathir, rahimahullah, he said, ta'allamu niyyah. Learn the niyyah, learn the intentions. Is not just something of admonition to the heart and that's it. And when it comes to the akhlaq, manners and mu'amalat, uh, there's so much details in this based on the niyyah. When we talk about al-khuluq, al-hasan, to have good manners with one another, to have the nasiha in the hearts towards one another, husn al-dhan bil-muslimin, to think good about Muslims, to be warned against su al-dhan, thinking bad about others, to be warned against the evil things done by the heart, al-hasad, envy, hatred, and so on and so forth. If you really look deep into it, it's all by the intentions of the person. Why people get to know each other? Are they faking their speech and actions towards one another? Or the sincere intention that this is for the sake of Allah? Everything should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when a person even gives a, give a gift, because the Prophet والسلام, he said, Tahadu tahabu. Give gifts, this will bring the love in your heart towards one another. So the niyyah that you're doing this because you have that ilm, you have that knowledge that this is part of our deen. If the Prophet والسلام, he said, fi wajhi akhika sadaqa, For you to smile to the face of your brother is a charity. You know that. This is not something that you decided. This is the wahyu from Allah, the revelation from Allah. So you know this, so when you smile to your brother, this is your intentions. You seek in rewards from Allah, you're, you're gaining a sadaqah, a reward of a sadaqah. And that's again the blessings of the ilm. The more we know from the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and we apply it, this is why we're applying it. We're not just applying it because we're nice people and we want to be decent with one another. This is an obvious thing. But we're doing what's, what a person is seeking. If he's seeking the pleasure of his, of his brother or to show off his kindness, very soon he will be tested. And that's why there's sometimes disunity, disputes over silly matters. All of that is because many of us do not learn the intentions or the niyyah. That the niyyah is only for the sake of Allah and to push away hafdun nafs, the share of oneself. The niyyah. Why is it difficult if you think of it from, even though it's easy by the will of Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do it, is because you don't have a share in it. You don't get anything as a reward in this life from your intention, except that you're making your ibadah to Allah. You're seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. It requires iman, requires faith. 
You're not seeking the pleasure of something physical in this life. You're seeking the rewards in the hereafter. But it's by the mercy of Allah, whoever is upon this, he would see the effect of it in his life and in the hereafter. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم عباد الله the subject of النية is a very detailed subject because it's in every action that we do in every speech that we make and the beauty of it that it makes the person always in state of dhikr of Allah. Constantly in the dhikr. The dhikr is with the tongue and with the heart, but you're always conscious of what you're doing. And that's why when Mu'adh radiallahu anhu and others, this is the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they did not waste anything in their life. When he says, Inni la ahtasibu nawmati kama ahtasibu qawmati. I seek rewards from Allah when I sleep, the same way that I seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I get up from sleep. Always seeking rewards from Allah with the proper intention, sincerely for the sake of Allah. And then the more we learn the deen, the more that this intention would be purified. The more we have the fear of Allah, the love of Allah, hope for the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also in relationships as we heard. Spouses when they deal with one another. Is it because this is how the norm and the culture is, which is yes to be recognized? Or it's because there are verses in the Quran that talks about this relationship. A hadith of the Prophet والسلام, Jibreel والسلام, came down with wahi with regards to the relationship between a husband and a wife. Then the intention is to submit ourselves to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if someone might think that the niyyah is difficult, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما أتاها. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not put a burden or command us or any nafs to be upon anything except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what he gave them. And we talked about that before meaning. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to make the salah, the salat al fard standing, he gave you the ability to stand, salah is fard upon you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took that away from you by his wisdom subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means the qiyam standing in salat al fard, it's not a mandatory for you. This is individual to the other. But when it comes to the entire deed of Allah, there is no command from Allah. In the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, that is beyond the capacity of the human beings. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to love him alone, this is in our ability. To fear him alone, to hope for the rewards from Allah, to have sincere intentions, that means it's a decision we make. Exactly like the same that you make a decision to make sujood, to make ruku'ah, the same thing with the niyyah with the intentions, with all of the deeds done by the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and this is one of the miraculous things in the deen of Islam. And this is a challenge for anyone that would try to find something in the deen of Islam that is beyond the capacity of the human beings. It's all perfect, with perfect levels of human beings. Even if you are weak and oppressed, everything is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of that comes from the foundation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. Even if you're in your happiness, in your sadness, it's all by the decree of Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will to test an individual with a musibah, with a calamity, the loss of life, the loss of wealth, who's the owner of all things? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who's the one that tested that individual or others or the ummah with whatever calamity? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's the most wise, the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. For what reason? To make the person patient, to make the person grateful, not to say anything except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. And it's always the intentions. Seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone in all of our affairs. The Arabs in the Jahiliyyah in this month of ours suffer. They used to have uh, evil beliefs that they would believe that in the month of Safar, calamities happens in it. So they would not travel in the month of Safar. They would stop everything, all the deals and everything. And they would do another evil action where they would exchange it with one of the Ashur al-Hurum. If they need to fight, 
they would stay away from the sacred months, but they would exchange, if they have to, to fight in the months of Al-Hurum, they would replace it with the month of Safar, playing with the religion that they invented to start with anyway. So this is always anyone that invents something, he would find something to do all kinds of tricks and hayal. But the point here is, their hearts were, when, what is, when it wasn't upon the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they had this tasha'um, this pessimism, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all things. And therefore, this is against our deen. Because the means, we take the means and everything is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are commanded to always be hopeful. And to know that the one that is running the affairs of the universe is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most wise, the most merciful. And everything has a wisdom behind it. And for us to be ibad to Allah, to be patient, to be grateful, to seek rewards from Allah, to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and everyone shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in the day of judgment, then people would see the effects of their actions. Fariqum fil jannah wa fariqum fil sa'ir. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are sincere in all of their affairs and their ibadahs and their speech and their actions. Allahumma aqsim lana min khashyatika ma tahulu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asiyatika. ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا واجعل الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعاء أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم